Welcome to this virtual video about the value and importance of social media. You know, it's not just for kids anymore. So today, talking about this uh, interesting topic is Daria Benya, who's a marketing communication specialist with Virtual, Taylor Giafrida, who's a marketing communications coordinator, and myself, Carol Fasaro, I'm a senior marketing manager um, here at Virtual. The key topics for today's discussion are the impact of COVID on social media, um, knowing your audience, the uh, key goals and objectives for your social media campaign, the type of content you should be delivering, and also the 80-20 rule and other best practices. So I'm just going to kick off the discussion. Um, obviously, you know, the pandemic did have an impact on how businesses were communicating and how we all communicate um, on social media. It's it used to be something that you know uh, the kids would use, but but it really has increasingly become more important for all of us, particularly in post-pandemic life, to kind of stay in touch. Um, to keep up with people, to keep up with our family, our friends, our colleagues. Um, it was definitely a very safe way to stay in touch with people and really understand um, you know, how people were coping. We definitely shared tips and you know, like what we could binge on Netflix and how we were dealing with handling you know, work from home. Um, and it was also a way really for um, businesses that, you know, that we frequent and, and I know definitely for some of our clients to really share what they were doing um, for the pandemic. If meetings were being transitioned, obviously, to virtual events and then how they were dealing with the health and safety of their employees as we began to learn more about um, how the pandemic was affecting um, different communities. It really was a way to, for us to kind of, you know, keep in touch with what was going on. Um, so definitely it has had an impact on how we used social media. Yeah, so um, I'll touch on the knowing your audience. I'll, we'll dive a little bit now deeper into um, just some best practices, audience content, um, goals and objectives on your social channels in general. So we'll kick it off with knowing your audience. And so each platform um, in, in any industry, if you have, if you choose to do three platforms, four, five, any social media platform you your organization is using will have a unique audience. Um, and it's super important to understand your audience on each platform and how they may vary. So for example, if your company is using, you know, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, each platform may just vary slightly. Um, so LinkedIn might be a little bit more of a professional audience that you're dealing with. So your content, you really want to cater on that platform to reach your you know, professional network out there. Your Twitter audience may be a little more, still might be some of the same folks from LinkedIn, but then you might have a few others in there that aren't on LinkedIn and it's a little more um, casual. It's a little more fast paced on Twitter. So your content on Twitter might be a little more newsworthy or just something quick to share to get the word out there. So it's really important to know on each platform who your audience is that you're dealing with. And a little further in the presentation, I'll, I'll touch upon content for your audience um, and why it's important to, to, to cover for your audience there. Um, and as you'll see, the first bullet I have under the, the sub bullet there says organic social media. So I'll touch a little bit on organic versus paid social here. Um, so when you have a social media platform, right, your audience that is organic is just coming to you naturally. They might find your channel just, you know, they happen to come across a post, they liked what you put out there, and then they liked your page or they started to follow you. So that's organic. It happened naturally. There was no dollars put behind getting the, the, the follower to your page. And so with that, because 
you didn't specifically target them, you might not know exactly who your audience is. So it's really important to do a deep dive, an audit, you know, if, whether you do it monthly, quarterly, annually, um, to know who your audience is on your page. You know, we, we want to know everything we can about who we're trying to communicate information to. So knowing their geographic breakdown, their demographics, their education level, their their age, you know, their um, titles, their companies that they're working for. Just knowing who is on your channels will help you in the long run. So the next bullet there is personas. And so personas, uh, they're a great, great, great tool. Um, I know we use them a lot when we are doing paid social. So when we're doing a paid social um, advertisement, so say on LinkedIn, we might want to target a very specific group of people for a membership <laughs> recruitment, or maybe we want to target a very specific group for um, a distribution of a white paper. So creating personas is a great way to get that very specific, uh, that your very specific content in front of a very specific audience. And so that's where the paid social comes in. So you want to add some dollars behind getting it really in front of that audience. So I'll, as an example, if you're ever on, you know, Facebook and you see that sweatshirt that you really like that's that comes up as an advertisement for you, that's because you might have been on that website shopping, clicked it and left. And that's how that sweatshirt got put back in front of you. You know, you are their target audience. So um, a little bit different for our tech clients and our associations, how we do our paid advertisements, but it's along those lines, you know, if we're seeking out somebody with a specific title or from a specific organization, we will target our content or our advertisements to reach that group. And so that's kind of the difference there. Um, when you create personas, you kind of know who your audience is as opposed to the organic side. They just find you naturally and you didn't specifically seek them out. But overall, who, you, who are you following and engaging with? It does not matter if you seek them out organically or via paid, you got to be social to get social. Um, so putting out content and don't just leave it there. Like I said, I'll touch a little bit more on content later, but if an audience member is commenting on your post, even just liking their post back or replying back to them saying, thanks for sharing, you know, people want to be recognized and they want to feel noticed. And so wherever you can and wherever it's relevant, reply back. And you don't want to be too pushy. You don't want to be too salesy, but even just commenting on somebody's post saying, this is great. Um, you know, thanks for, thanks for the comment. Thanks for sharing. Just putting a voice behind your company is so important. We don't want to just be robots behind our our accounts, you know, it's my first thought whenever I think of voices behind and people engaging with their audience is like Wendy's. I don't know if either of you have followed Wendy's on Twitter, but they are so between Wendy's and Chipotle, they are always replying back to their audience members. They are always replying back. So you can have fun with it if that's where where your uh, voice is, if you're a little more fun, free willing company. Add a, add a video, add a picture, a GIF back to the reply, you know, have fun with your replies. But, you know, if you're a little more professional, a little more serious of an organization, just still try to engage back with your um, audience is super important. I think that's, you know, knowing your audience, Taylor, you're absolutely right. Knowing your audience is key because you don't want to just throw up social content just for the sake of so throwing up, you know, posts. Basically, you really need to start with determining what is it that you want to get out of your social campaign? What are the objectives that you're trying to reach? And I know for a number of our clients, it has to do with, you know, either driving awareness of an event, driving an awareness for the organization, driving membership. So it's really important to identify what those key objectives are. So, you know, it's going to be different. You may be a new organization and you're really just trying to create general awareness about your organization and and either the products that you offer, the services that you provide, and you're just looking for exposure. Um, you know, maybe if you've launched a website, you want to 
definitely be driving people to your website, hopefully to to drive more engagement and interest in your organization. And, you know, in terms of generating leads, um, you know, there's ways to obviously, if you have an event or you have a new product, or um, again, if you're offering membership and you have some kind of campaign, these are the types of things that you want to identify um, for how you're going to use media. Um, and, you know, the other thing too is not just about, um, you know, putting out content to get sales or membership. Um, it's also about trying to engage with your community because you do want to build a community. Um, you want to get people involved in the posts and there's different ways to do that and i know daria and taylor are going to be uh, explaining some of those but you also want to use it as a way to gain you know information from the group that you're targeting your audience like what is it that they want to see what is it that they want to hear about and that's really the way to build uh, a community on social so once you've kind of identified what your you know, uh, strategies are, you really need to then say, okay, who in my organization is going to be responsible for, you know, handling, you know, here's the messaging, um, here's the graphics, here's the posts, you know, typically what we do is we put together a social calendar um, and put together a schedule because we do have an objective in mind. Um, and then we also need to identify um, which platforms we're going to use, which I know Taylor had talked about. There's different platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, you know, uh, depends on really where your audience is and what platform is uh, most impactful. And then it's, you know, then getting your messages in the format for social media that make um, that makes sense. Obviously, with Twitter, you have fewer character characters to use, um, and you know, basically putting that all together in your schedule, doing the posts, and then finally, after you're uh, after you've posted the content, you want to see what kind of impact it's having. How many likes are you getting? How many shares are people engaging with your posts? So definitely, you want to set up um, sort of how you're going to measure the impact of your campaign and is it meeting your target um, so then I, I think the next step is obviously content so a great way to start with content is by having a content calendar this can really turn a bunch of chaos into harmony if you're managing a lot of different content via multiple different platforms, it can turn messy really fast. So having one central place to organize all of this content is a great way to start. Um, you know, for a, a good resource and some examples of content calendars, you can just do a quick Google search, a bunch of images and links will come up with different suggestions and really kind of sifting through all of those and picking out the best pieces um, from each of the resources that you find and making it into your own form of a content calendar that has all the information that you think is important to be tracking um, is really the best place to start. A lot of my content calendars for clients have the date, what platform they're going to be scheduled out on, uh, a high level content topic overview, and then it lists out the copy that we're actually going to use. There's a section for to input the graphic right there or the video uh, content that we're going to be using, including with the post and um, and having that right in this content calendar. And then lastly, the link. So there's a section in there that uh, you can have just an organic link to whatever the call to action is going to be, or you can add a trackable UTM code in there as well. And, um, you know, having this one central place to organize your content really just helps hold your teams accountable. It helps you uh, set clear deadlines and plan out campaigns. So you can start to think about uh, your content ahead of time, whether that be scheduling things out a week ahead or a month ahead, a quarter ahead. Um, it really helps you lay out all of your ideas and figure out the best dates and times and uh, platforms to push out your different information on. Yeah, and you know, all this content you're pushing out, 
make sure in the next part you're using visuals. Um, you know, your content and planning your content is the best tool that you can do, but also planning the graphics and the visuals you're going to use with them is the second best thing you can do. Um, every post that you really? put out there really, yeah, it's like every post you put out there should have some type of eye catching visual graphic. Um, you know, think of when you're scrolling on your own personal channels, what you stop and read or look at, at least for me personally, and I'm sure for Daria and Carol, we're stopping and you see the things that have a video or a picture, um, just something that's a little more eye catching. And it's really important when you're doing visuals that they are matching your branding, you know, people feed off of brand awareness, you know, brand awareness for your company is so important. So making sure you're using maybe the same color palette that is with for your um, organization, using the same fonts, using the correct imagery, just using visuals that go along with your branding um, will go a long way. But also not to contradict myself here, but have a little fun too. Maybe use some some GIFs there as well. Um, if you're a company that has a little more fun, free willing voice, like I mentioned earlier, use a, use a GIF, you know, a famous kind of SpongeBob GIF I always see on uh, people's Twitters or um, something from the office, you know, that it's happening, everybody stay calm. Um, something that's a little more fun that people might recognize will also help put a little bit of a, a visual piece to your um, your posts. But overall, really yeah, it's try relatable. To your, yeah, it's relatable, mm. you know, it's fun, it's adds quirky, it's adds personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So overall, try to stick to your branding, but don't be afraid to throw in a little fun, you know, clips in there. <laughs> And um, to keep your posts with the lengthwise of the content, um, keep your posts short. You know, just because you have extra or more characters on LinkedIn and Facebook doesn't mean you need to use them all. Um, Twitter's a little bit more managed in a sense that it's only limited characters, so you really can't exceed that long, multi-paragraph type post. Um, but again, as I mentioned earlier with time and how much time your audience will have, not everyone has the time to sit there and read a two, three paragraph post on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or whatever your platform is. So just being mindful of how much content you're putting into your posts is really important as well. Um, and lastly, reuse your best content. Don't be afraid to sh reshare something. You know, if a month ago you posted a blog post that got great engagement, tons of comments, likes, and you know it's a benefit and a resource to your communities on your platform, reshare it again, maybe in another week, another month. And you can always position it as a, in case you missed it, or have you read our latest blog? Um, you don't have to always, always push out something brand new for social media. Resharing and repurposing your content that was received really well will go a long way. Great points, Taylor. Taylor those are, yeah, those are all great points. And I, I know that Daria has more to share, particularly about the, what's this about the 80-20 rule? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, I mean, I think if you are involved in a career path that includes social media, you've probably heard something about an 80-20 rule. Some people call it a 90-10 rule, 70-30. Pretty much the overarching message here is that nobody wants their social feeds filled with a bunch of garbage or just filled with a ton of posts from a certain organization that is, you know, asking them to pay for this sign up for that, save your spot for this. So, um, you know, there really is a method to balancing promotional content that um, could contribute to revenue for your organization, but also positioning yourself as the expert in your industry. So, you know, helping to position yourself as the expert in your industry does include sharing content from other organizations or news sources that are covering the same topic as you. Um, it includes, you know, sharing another, you know, one of your followers post something interesting about a topic that is important to your industry, helping spread their word on social and, and resharing that. Um, uh, another piece could be 
you know, sharing a news article that uh, is there big news about something that's happening in your industry that, you know, just hit the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times, um, you know, sharing that content with your audience, because really that positions you as the expert for your field. And um, people will come to you as the source for all of the information uh, that has to do with your specific industry. Um, and this goes straight back to content as well. So you can be sharing valuable facts, uh, doing some fun campaigns. Don't be afraid to test different kinds of content that you're sharing on your feeds. Uh, Twitter has a great poll option and so does LinkedIn. Um, you can poll your audience and ask them a simple question. Maybe that will help you uh, frame content for your future blogs or webinar series that you're offering or, you know, any other piece of information. Um, you can have a trivia day on Twitter. A great part about Twitter is you can post as many times as you want a day um, where the newsfeed operates in a really quick, fast-paced um, sort of environment. So you could set up a trivia day on Twitter and post 15 questions once an hour and see if you get some responses and comments. Um, so really, you know, having this these more so like fun pieces of news or content is going to help with your engagements. And it kind of goes back to what Taylor was saying before is that, um, you know, you just, you don't want everything to be promotional and requesting your audience to purchase something from you or sign up for something. Um, it gives you an opportunity to have a conversation on social. And I think that that's really uh, the most valuable part about social media is that you can engage with people that you might not have the opportunity to engage with on other platforms and sources. I, you know, I thought this was a great conversation um, and there were some great points here. I, and I think for people to, you know, go to virtual's um, social channels and see what we're posting. And, and we're always posting different tips and techniques and videos like this one. So please follow us and like us. <laughs> and um, be sure to check out our website, connect with us at virtualinc.com. And if you have any questions about today's presentation or about our social media services, uh, definitely send us an email at info at virtualinc.com. So great conversation with you both today. I was honored to be uh, chatting with you all. So. Oh, thanks, thanks ladies. ladies. <laughs>